coach, what's uh, obviously the scrimmage? What, what were some of your takeaways from it, and uh, what were some of the standouts to you? Uh, good question. So going into it, my objective, and I expressed that to the team, is I want to focus on seeing can guys get lined up, uh, be assignment sound, technique sound, play with great effort, um, and then just have fun playing football. And, and uh, as football players, we practice so much, and you only get 17 opportunities throughout the course of the year. So I wanted to see some joy uh, out on the practice field, some great energy. Um, takeaways that I took, uh, you know, we, we made Jay Wolfolk live, and he's electric. And he was, uh, he was hard to tackle. Uh, still has to uh, grow as a quarterback, but in terms of, uh, of a dynamic athlete with the ball in his hand, that was good to see. Uh, it was good to see that we were able to run the ball a little bit from an offensive side. And then I, now I'm a head coach, so I, I got both sides. The other flip side is, you know, we didn't stop the run like we've been doing in practice. And so it was kind of, you know, the tale of, of, of two different groups uh, all throughout. Uh, camp so far, defense has, has had the energy and, and kind of set the tempo. Today, offense came out and, uh, and set the tempo, which uh, which kind of surprised me because we're still, you know, we're still banged up on the offensive line. Didn't have all of our, our, our top guys going, so that was a positive on the offensive side. But also a, a positive too. I get to challenge the defense uh, a little bit more about setting the tempo. You know, Camper continues to uh, just be steady. I mean, he, he he might not make the play, but he's influencing the play, and you know, he's flushing the quarterback so somebody else can make the play. Um, ben Smiley continues to make plays. I continue to see him. Uh, it was good to see Lavelle, you know, make some down the field plays. Uh, so there's a lot of positive. Going to be a lot of things to, to clean up. But for me today, first scrimmage was was just getting back in a game environment, managing the sideline for the coaches, substitutions, uh, and then we'll watch the film to see, you know, what details we need to clean up. For the part we were at, Mike Hollins seemed to be energized today. What, what did you see from Mike today? <laughs> it, it was it, he must he must he must have uh, knew y'all were there, and then after y'all left, he decided. Uh, but you know, Mike's a guy, and, and, and I'm a I'm gonna continue to press on him hard because he's very talented, and uh, and he's he's got some habits that he needs to break. Um, he he'll run he'll run hard and, and look the way you want him to look one play, and then the next play he'll cut too deep in the backfield, dance in the hole when he shouldn't. So uh, still, you know, part of that is experience. He's got he's got to have more experience in our system and what we're trying to do. But he's got competition. You know, Cody's running the ball hard. I, I tell you, Paris is having an outstanding camp. Uh, if I was to play today, uh, Paris would be the guy that I'd run out there first, uh, just because of, of his consistency throughout uh, throughout camp and his feeling for what we're trying to do in the run game. And then uh, the young buck, Xavier. You know, Xavier has come in and and, uh, and and surprised us all, being that he was a guy with his body type you would think be more of a, a scat type of back. But man, he'll slam it up there with his with his 185 pounds. So there's competition. So the energy that you're seeing in Mike is is competition, and there's a lot of truth with those guys. Um, and transparency uh, to help them get better. How deep into the playbook do you think you really are right now at this point? You know, Dez has a lot in. Really, really challenge these guys, and, and and that's what you do in fall camp, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you attempt to get as, as your, your whole plan in, and then you'll you'll pair it back as you get into your opponents. But what you want to do is you want to give them exposure uh, to all of the, the components of your system so that when you need them, you can pull from them and it's not something foreign to them. And on the flip side, I, I think Rudd's got about two playbooks in with all the stuff that he's doing. Typical defensive coordinator, man, they come in, they throw everything at you. So so it's been it's been really good for, for all of our guys up front because on the defensive side of the ball, there won't be anything that they'll see that will overwhelm them and be new to them. It'll, it'll just be recognition, uh, muscle memory, and, and execution. Offensive line, wise you said you're still a little banged up there, yeah. but how would you describe the guys that are able to play? You know, Leach is, uh, Leach is, is, is really, really, really turned the corner for us. And, and he's gone from a guy that we were trying to get excited in the spring to, to play football to now he's, you know, asking Dez, hey, call the run to my side, coming off the sideline. You know, so that's a big transformation for him. Um, you know, hate that, that, that Josie was out today and Taylor's still out. And, um, you know, Devine's kind of a guy that, that uh, you know, he's battling some foot stuff and uh, nothing that's going to keep him off the field, but we got to be smart. He's already had two foot surgeries. And so, so it's really, really good for the young guys. You know, Charlie is a guy, Charlie, that I was really, really excited. Uh, we got to get him going. You know, he's not, he's not performing uh, as he did in the spring. Uh, some of it's mental, just trying, just trying to be perfect. I got to get all these guys to stop worrying about making a mistake, just make a mistake going 100 miles an hour.
Ty Furnish, you know, at center, what yeah. have you seen from his development? His confidence is growing every single day. Uh, at that position, man, you gotta you gotta be like the quarterback. You gotta have a, a moxie to you, and you're starting to see that. You're starting to see him more comfortable with the communication, with his identifications, and from there, then he can he can allow his talent because he's a very talented guy, not overly big, uh, but he's very very skilled, uh, very very technically sound. But when you're at the center position and you're responsible for getting all five guys going in the same uh, same direction, then you have to have to adjust for any variations of movement. Got the quarterback changing the snap count in the middle of the snap count. That's a lot uh, on the center. So, so you're starting to see him become more comfortable. And as he's become more comfortable, he's become more productive. The quarterback situation behind Brennan, how is that developing? You mentioned Jay today. How is that developing some of those guys? Yeah, all those guys, you know, they got to they gotta grow up, grow up fast, uh, in fairness to a couple of them that just got here. And, and you're putting in a you're putting in a system that requires a lot of the quarterback. Uh, so so behind Jay, uh, it's kind of a, it's just kind of a group of guys that no, none of them been able to separate. But today it was good. We were able to put them in a blue jersey, uh, let them feel a real rush, let them get tackled. Uh, so I'm excited to see you know the, the progress that they uh, that they made. Uh, but right now, obviously Brendan and then uh, then Jay would be the guy behind him, and then we'll figure it out as we as we get get close to the game. You said Jay was electric. Electric. What, what was electric? What was well, just uh, when he pulls the ball down, uh, you better watch out because, man, he can he can fly. He's got great change of direction, and you can just tell he's a natural. You know, he's a natural playmaker with the ball in his hand. He's making guys miss, and then he's 200 pounds. So if he wants to drop his pads, he can drop his pads and and, uh, and run people over. But the biggest thing that that surprised me seeing it in a live situation without uh, the orange jersey was his speed and change of direction. Do you have a, a timetable in mind for a place kicker for, for making a decision in terms of who's going to do your field goals, and how you're going to split up kick off, all that? You know, once we get through next week, the, the second scrimmage, it'll be more situational stuff, give those guys a fair opportunity to kick in some live situations. We just got the pads on earlier this week, and we're still restricted with the amount of uh, full contact that we can have. So uh, today was good. Uh, we were able to, to get some kickoff work, some punt work. Uh, and then also some field goal extra point stuff. Uh, so it'll be good evaluation. But hopefully, as we get through next week, uh, we, we start class the following Tuesday. Uh, so and then we'll be in the Richmond prep after that. So uh, hopefully by by the end of the week, next week, we'll have some some clarity on where we're going there. You had one blocked. Any idea who got it? Yeah, uh, Chico got it. Chico Chico was the one that got his hand got his hand in there. So we had we had improved from the uh, from the spring because man we were seeing like we get one blocked every day and that was my message at the end of practice is, is to really challenge the guys to take pride in special teams you know we we, we, we were three uh, we're a triple braided cord you know there's there's three there's three units and and no unit can needs to compensate for another unit we all need to complement each other and so so today was good that I get to challenge uh, all the guys on special teams to, to go be special and not just uh, worry about playing on offense and defense. Can Sterling be a guy that helps you in return? Man, Demet can be a guy that helps us all the way around. I mean, the dude is the dude's fast. Like he's really fast and he's very very quick. Um, just got to get him, you know, got to get him going in the right direction. But definitely, he can be a guy um, trying to trying to work him into being a punt returner. He's more comfortable catching kickoffs uh, than he is uh, punts. Uh, but we had a couple balls on the ground that we mishandled. Uh, and his biggest, you know, his biggest thing is he wants to make a play every play. And as a uh, as a punt returner, uh, you have to you have to understand uh, the game when you want to take a chance, when you don't want to take a chance, and when you need to use your fair catch. And he's the kind of guy that he don't want to use a fair catch ever. So. Did you see just because Brennan being the better guy? Did you see how much him being here helps kind of get this offense going a little bit quicker? It's huge uh, because. Everybody looks to him and, and the work that he's put in and just how comfortable he's become in the system and uh, his ability to, to, to manage. He's learning to manage the game. Even saw him out there. I was proud of him uh, adjusting some protection calls. And, and when a quarterback's uh, adjusting protection calls, you can tell that he's, uh, he's feeling really comfortable with the, uh, with the system because then now he's, that means he's not thinking about what the play concept is. Now he's able to focus on the defense and know Per the play concept, where he's where he's vulnerable, and get his offensive line and his backs all on the same page. So, so it's huge, and it just that that creates a that creates a, a, a no sense of anxiousness with everybody else. They all can just be calm and free because they know they got their guy back there running the show. It looked like Chico was was working more with the ones. Like yeah, they competition they mix that up. They mix that up every day, uh, and, and that's how I like it. To be honest with you, uh, to keep those guys. Hungry and competitive, and, and to be honest with you, uh, you you really want to have just a D line 
that all of them could go in there and start and play for you. Uh, if you if you want to have success, you know, at the at the at the highest level, you, it, it's inside out. And so I like the fact that uh, every day it's a different guy based off the previous day's performance. So it keeps those guys uh, keeps those guys hungry. So you're starting to see that all those guys are are, are showing flashes of uh, of improvement. Yeah, uh, that's uh, yeah, his shoulder. You know, he got he got a. He got banged up again this week, so he didn't get as uh, as many reps. And and really, it was it was the day that he got elevated to the first team. So he was out there first, and then he gets another shot on the shoulder, and uh, nothing severe, but still, you know, he missed a little bit of time after that. So uh, he's a guy that's trending in the uh, in the right direction. And then, you know, I have to get the uh, the actual diagnosis on uh, on Cohen, but he went down in the scrimmage with an elbow. Hopefully, it's nothing uh, nothing too serious, but uh, but he he got banged up a little bit, so. You know, we gotta we gotta find some guys at that safety spot uh, to step up. We'll take the last question from Jermaine. Um, Coach Elliott, uh, Coach uh, Kitchens was uh, put into the Coalition Academy. You took part in that academy yourself. Talk about how valuable was that for you, and how you see it'll help Coach Kitchens. You know, Coach Kitchens and I have known each other for a long time, and. Uh, and we've been a part of several different uh, opportunities to grow. And, and I think the first thing to point out is, is that uh, in this profession, you have to be intentional with your preparation and, and take part in many different opportunities to grow. Um, and the coalition, uh, you know, is for the guys that have kind of progress through you know the first couple of steps and and are close to, to transitioning and, and Des has already been a, a coordinator uh, in the ACC uh, he's called plays at NC State uh, now he's here so the next progression he's even interviewed for for head coaching jobs in the past uh, so it's important uh, for for me to encourage that and provide him opportunity because for me it gave me exposure uh, and connection to um, to ADs and administrators around the country. Whereas, you know, if you follow me at Clemson, I was always locked in and, and very rarely did I, did I take much time for myself to, to prepare. But uh, Des is a guy that wants to uh, eventually be in, be in my seat and I want to do everything that I can to help him. And the coalition is a great opportunity for him to network and to, and to be put in front of the people that actually make the decisions. That's the tough part for any coordinator, regardless of uh, what school you're at, is, is being able to get in front of the people that make the decisions uh, and they know who you are, what you're about, because when that when the process happens, it happens fast. And uh, and and the more you can do on the front end, the more you feel confident and comfortable uh, as a coordinator transitioning with the decision that you're about to make.